So tell me, why was the new album named Sweet F.A.? It started two years ago in San Francisco. We were there for most of the summer a couple of years ago. We weren't satisfied with it. Went back to England, to Oxford, to, the, to a studio in Oxford. Still weren't satisfied with it. Both ourselves, well, we were at that time, by that time, the American records and particularly Rick Rubin they had criticisms on the sound of the, and some of the songs and the, the, the overall sound. So then we, they invited American records, if you like, invited us to LA to finish it off last summer. We had a big fire, nothing left, so it seemed appropriate at the time to call it Sweet F.A. because Sweet F.A. means sweet, which is an English expression which means nothing, zilch, zero. Tell me how Rick Rubin influenced Sweet F.A. He just dried everything up, took all the reverb and delays off, and um, just brought out the real kind of richness that the vocals and the instruments. Um, and for me, I've been living in America for like five years by that point. And to me, it, it worked, it you know, made sense. Totally. Yeah, Rick Rubin, particularly, particularly vocals, he has no effects on them, they're really dry, and that's sort of alien to us as a group. But also, if you listen to a lot of English pop music or rock music, it's flooded in reverb. Uh, it's much more of a subtle sound in as much as it's like a big wave that goes over you whereas with American sort of attitude is like in your face within the realms of rock and roll anyway so it's like the English like their reverb still even now. Interesting. Um, tell me about the cover of Sweet F.A. Well it's, the, it's just the, the one thing that was left from the fire was the shape of that guitar that's it. The drums completely went. I mean had a, we had a saxophone in there and it completely melted. It just went through the floorboards. You know. Uh, that was the only thing that looked like a musical instrument that was left, so again, it seemed like appropriate to put it on the car. Why did you wait five years before recording Hot Trip to Heaven? Two years. Two years? Yeah, we started, we... We had a break in 89 to 91, and yeah, and then we started in 92. It took two years to make it, so like as far as the public goes, it looks like it's been about six years before we've been working together, but in actual fact, it was like we had 24 months off in effect. And then we started on that record, that took two years, and then this one took two years to finish as well. And then, you know, the first one, it, was, it wasn't really right to go on the road with it, it wasn't like a didn't suit the format of rock and roll, if you like, bass, drums and guitar, because it was all made in the studio. So. Your past and present recordings, why are they so different from Hot Trip to Heaven? Because we're taking different drugs, basically. Well, with, and with, with the Hot Trip album, we wanted to, you know, come back and make some music again, but we didn't want to, we didn't like look forward to the idea of sitting in a rehearsal room and writing songs in that way, so we thought, well, let's just all show up and make it up as we go along, just be really spontaneous and, and if it doesn't work within a week then we'll, you know, do something else about it. Yeah. And it was also taking on board all the music that had happened since our last tour in 89 in the, sort of Acid House and that field, you know, so that came to bear. You know. What inspired the lyrics for Sweet F.A.? Whereas in the past we tend to sort of go on about different philosophies and religious notions, if you like, and ideas where, but it's like a very healthy dose of um, sexuality, but, I mean, something that seems to be on my mind most of the time, anyways. Yeah.